want to cover today uh, the whole concept of entrepreneurship because we are entrepreneurs. That is, when you walk into life leadership, you are walking into an entrepreneurial environment, and it's probably a good thing that you understand uh, what it is that makes an entrepreneur different than a conventional um, uh, job or a conventional career type uh, format. An entrepreneur would be what we would call a prime mover. And a prime mover comes from Aristotle when he, way back in the day, once wrote, if then everything that is in motion is moved by something, and the prime mover is moved, but not by anything else, it must be moved by itself. Let me, uh, let me interpret. <clears throat> when you see something in motion, you know something must have moved that to make it go in motion. Except for if you track that back, eventually there must have been something that moved that wasn't ever moved. That's the prime mover. Now, ultimately, that leads back to God. But in this sense, in this sense of a prime mover, it's who motivates the motivator. And the entrepreneur is the one that keeps himself or herself motivated, driven, moving ahead, moving ahead, without anybody else having to inspire because they are constantly learning to inspire themselves. Their dream, uh, at staying ahead of them, keeps them motivated, moving towards the mark. Entrepreneurs are those prime movers within society. In fact, if you take a look at history, any time a society has punished entrepreneurship, it's also punished prosperity. Any time where you see there's no entrepreneurs, because as entrepreneurs move ahead, everything in that society moves ahead. I'll give you just one example of many. You take a look at a person like Henry Ford, who was just a broke mechanic, young man, that was tinkering around working on an automobile. He wasn't the first one to create it, but he had read about it, saw some stuff about it, and he was a pretty good mechanic, so he started tinkering around with his own. Built a, a, his first automobile, he built it in a shed, then he tried to drive it out of the shed and realized he built it bigger than the shed. <laughs> he couldn't get his first car out. He had to bust apart his shed to get the car out to drive it around, and it actually worked, and he's like so excited that he built it. And when he first came out with the Model T, it was thousands of dollars for this car, as it was all cars, because it was very uh, difficult to build, and only the high-end, wealthy people could afford a car. But he had an idea. He said, what if I come up with a mass production system and, and have all these different steps? What if I built it to the point that we could start lowering that price down to where people in the middle class could afford that car? And year after year, he kept producing the Model T, and every year he was lowering the price of that car and sold millions upon millions of cars. And so he brought to uh, uh, the average person the ability to have the enjoyment of something that before only the wealthy could have. That was Henry Ford. And you know what? He made millions upon millions of dollars for doing so. Now some of you are like, that's unfair. He made millions upon millions of dollars when, that, when the person driving the car didn't make millions for driving it. That's true. What they got to do is got a great value. They were willing to, Henry Ford didn't put a gun to anybody's head to say, buy my car or else. It wasn't coercion. It was, wow, for that price, I want to have a car because of the enjoyment. So they were blessed, and in the process of Henry Ford figuring out a method to bless many individuals, blessings flowed back to him. That's what entrepreneur is about. So how many people want to bless the world with your efforts? Very good, very good. That's what an entrepreneur does.